I thought I'd make this video based on my past struggles with trying to figure out what was wrong with my car. I got many different codes over the last six months. Uh, I bought this GM rebuilt OptiSpark back in, I believe, June when I rebuilt my engine. And one of the first problems I had after I got the engine running was I'd be driving down the road and it would just suddenly quit. Nothing. Crank over, crank over, nothing. No alarms, no uh, codes, no nothing. And while I was shaking and checking plugs and everything, I happened to press down on the connector to the OptiSpark with a screwdriver and it started running. So that led me to uh, wonder about the connection inside. This came from GM with putty tape and uh, shrink wrap all over it. And one of the things I had to do was I, I pressed down on it really hard and, and it started running. So I felt like, well, maybe that was it. It just wasn't, you know, seated all the way. And it went running probably for a couple months and intermittently I'd still get a, a low high resolution code and some other stuff. But for the most part, the car was running. Uh, then it started getting worse again and I was having the uh, engine stopping and, and such. And again, really not any codes that led me to believe it was the Opti Spark, but I could still wiggle on this connector. What I did was get in between the block and the water pump with an X-Acto knife and I was able to cut the shrink wrap off and work the rubber tape off and all that. And I was able to unplug this connector. And one of the issues I immediately found was the uh, pins at the end weren't visible. They weren't seated as Luckily, I had an old harness I had found in the wheel well when I was cleaning the car, and when I compared them, I was still getting some high resolution faults, but for the most part, the car was running pretty good. Up until probably the last month or two, I've had hard starts, uh, high resolution faults, it would really suddenly run really bad, like it was running on four cylinders, backfiring into the intake, uh, you know, timing based issues that were uh, becoming worse and worse. And it was so intermittent that you really couldn't uh, troubleshoot it on the side of the road where it seemed to always happen. As part of the last couple of months troubleshooting, I purchased a uh, oscilloscope multimeter to do a better job of reading the signals on the low and high resolution, as well as the signal to the uh, ignition control, just to kind of get a handle on, you know, where the fault lied, because, you know, no one wants to go through the trouble of replacing their OptiSpark unless they really have to. And I just wanted to make, you know, certain that it was the OptiSpark before I went through all that trouble and expense. So the point of today's video is we're going to take apart this probably 2,000, maybe 2,500 mile OptiSpark and see if we can understand what happened. All right, well, I used my needle nose pliers originally just to see if I could get in on these recessed bolts and I actually was able to, so I've gotten one screw loose. And I was in the process of loosening the other when I stopped to make the video. So we'll get this one out. I don't have a Torx bit that's that small and it's puny. So here we go on the outside ones. They're not very tight at all, as much as I would expect them to be tight. Some needle nose vice grips would probably be better, but here we are. And we got the other one, we get one more. 
And I would like to note that the back of this is perfectly clean. There was no antifreeze dropping on it. There was no oil leaks. So, you know, I don't expect to see any liquid type damage. I never drove in the rain. I didn't wash the engine. Uh, you know, this was put on when I rebuilt the engine back in uh, the summer. So it is as a, a clean unit here. Uh, it might have a little bit of antifreeze on it now when I pulled the water pump. I tried to drain the block the best I could, but I still got some water that came out when I pulled the water pump off. And changing an Opti Spark is definitely not as fun as people have always said. It took me about four hours to get it swapped. One trick I found was I used a pipe wrench on the outside of my damper to keep the bolts from spinning the engine when it was trying to uh, pull those three bolts out of the damper to get it out of the way. Come on. I'm going to get a little washer on these. All right. All right, there comes that screw. We'll put those over here. All right, here comes the big reveal. Well, there's the inside of the distributor, which is actually very clean and looks dry. Nothing looks to be out of place. There it is a little hair of some sort of plastic that was flopping in the edge here. The screws on the rotor are good and tight, not moving around. The edge of the rotor that makes contact looks fairly clean. I don't see it except a little, it doesn't look dirty. No rough edges on it. Okay, so now we'll take the rotor off and see what we have behind here. These screws have a washer on them, a little flat washer. There's the other flat screw with the flat washer. Here is the I don't know if you can see that very good, but that's the rotor. The little dimple in the middle where it was running on the center parts, pretty clean looking. It does have kind of an odd coloring on the edge of it. It does a good job seeing it, but. Okay, so now we should be able to, I believe, pull this electrical part off. Which came off just like this, which I'm curious. Oh, okay, so the connector goes through this ring and goes directly into the optical sensor. So that explains that. I wasn't quite sure how this connected. So again, this goes, as you can see, comes through. Okay, now for the exciting part of removing the shield. some sort of something in here, but I 
not sure what's getting. Let me wipe my hands off and see if this is on the inside or is it just on my you know, it's a little bit of something, something, something. Dust or whatever. Dirt, oily. And these are vented, and my vent system is connected to my intake as the 95s are designed. And I don't see how anything could have got in there. The disc looks pretty clean, just a little bit of something on there. Not sure what it is. Let's take a finger and clean finger. And we'll wipe on that a little bit. Nope. Oh. Off comes that. It's got a little oil or something on it. Is the OptiSpark centered? You know, the OptiSpark, I don't know if you can see that in this. It's really hard to see, but it's not centered. It's almost down on the bottom. And almost like it needed a spacer. So I'm going to lift it off gonna lift it off and look and see oh yeah look at that see it's been rubbing I don't know if you can see that but clearly not put together correctly it didn't have the end place set right but you can see where it's been rubbing no wonder it didn't work and it got worse and worse as I drove it so welcome aboard to the AC Delco professional rebuilt OptiSpark Hold this down here. Oh yeah, look at that. Even in the high resolution slots, there's trash and all sorts of stuff in there. So again, we've found the smoking gun, so to speak, of why this thing did not work. Very disappointing to spend that much money and then have this thing come apart or really not come apart, but fail. And I don't know, you can, let's see, we'll try to get it where you can see it, but you can see some discoloration on the optical sensor. And I'm gonna pull that off and we'll get a better picture of that. Let's see if I can get these off without having a resort to Oh boy, those things are tight. Okay, with that discovery, also checking for end play in the bearing, and there's really not. It's got a little bit of a rock to it, but not much in and out. So I believe that they just did not put any spacer behind this. That is, that's kind of shocking. Okay, well, let's pull the optical sensor and see what we've got here. Get this. Again, I don't quite have the right size for these little tiny Torx bits or Torx bolts, so it's going to have to hack our way through it. I don't see any evidence of any sort of thread locking material. I don't know how to tell if it's a Mitsubishi optical or not. We'll see if it says something on the back side. Yeah, I don't see it. Well, there might have been something on here. Who knows? All right, well, it says made in Japan. see anything that says anything exciting and you can see that brown residue where the plastic was being rubbed off by the opti as it went around the optical wheel I guess we'll call it so again months of headaches Hours and hours spent troubleshooting, diagnosing, trying everything possible to 
not have to replace the OptiSpark. And it really comes down to a bad assembly with no clearance for the optical wheel where it was rubbing on the sensor. So, thanks, AC Delco, Rock Auto. My sake, I put the Hopti back without any of the internal parts just to see when I clamped the rotor back on how bad that optical wheel was rubbing the sensor. And you, I don't know if you'll hear this, but this is what it sounds like. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous.